the world is still quite turbulent, and there's yes. news today about Egypt, and I'm curious, mm -hmm. with all the chaos that's breaking out there, um, uh, your thoughts on what's going to happen, uh, what should we do, if anything, and what does it mean for the region? Well, those are three really important questions, and I think that uh, post the uh, Arab revolutions that uh, took place in Egypt and Libya and Tunisia and you know, bursts of them elsewhere in the region, uh, there was always going to be a period of adjustment. And what we have to work for, along with the international community, uh, as well as people inside Egypt, is not to see these revolutions hijacked by extremists, not to see the return of uh, dictatorial rule, the absence of the rule of law. And it's hard. It's hard going from uh, decades under uh, one party or one man rule, uh, as somebody said, uh, waking up from a political coma and understanding democracy. So we have a lot at stake in trying to keep moving uh, these uh, transformations in the right direction. Is President Morsi, though, is he sort of with the program with us or not? Because he said some horrible things about Israelis um, two years ago, and there's some things printed today from one of his senior uh, aides about that the Holocaust didn't exist. And so there's sort of very sort of uh, suspicious things that he's saying, and with all the turmoil, uh, I'm wondering if he, you know, is he with us or against us? Well, we were quite concerned about those uh, statements, and the Egyptian presidency repudiated them and reaffirmed a commitment to the Israel-Egypt peace treaty, which is, of course, absolutely core to uh, everything that we hope to see happen in the Middle East. Uh, but you have to, uh, I think, uh, take a step back and look at uh, the fact that the people now in power in these countries have never been in government, never had a chance to really uh, learn how to run agencies or to make decisions. Uh, so. Uh, we don't uh, certainly condone or in any way approve of what a lot of these leaders are doing or failing to do. But we also know how important it is that uh, we try to avoid uh, even more extreme elements uh, which are active across the region, uh, taking control of territory, even threatening uh, a regime where the people are often American educated, have some um, ongoing uh, commitment to, you know, make tough decisions. When I negotiated the ceasefire in Gaza with President Morsi, he was, you know, very involved. I'd obviously gone to Israel first, then I went to Egypt, and we got it done. It's still holding. So we have to, you know, keep pushing forward and yet call it like we see it when we think something is not appropriate, as we did uh, with those statements. When you met him, did you have a sense that he was a good partner or someone that we could deal with, or do we have to you know, sort of you know, be very cautious with him? I think he has a lot of the right intentions. Uh, you know, certainly in my long conversations with him, uh, the many uh, reports of meetings uh, that I've received of other American officials, uh, a recent uh, congressional delegation, uh, you do get the impression that he uh, and the team around him are trying to deal with uh, the economy that is in very bad shape uh, in Egypt, uh, the loss of uh, foreign uh, currency and investment uh, and the tourism trade, uh, the political reforms that are necessary. But, the, you know, the jury's out, Greta. Uh, you know, I've been around long enough, so it's not what somebody says, it's what they do. And some of what he's done we have approved of and supported, and some of what he's done, like abrogating a lot of power unto himself personally, uh, reinstating uh, emergency uh, law provisions that uh, had been a hallmark of the Mubarak regime, are very troubling. And, you know, we have a balancing act to do, as do the Egyptian people. Uh, as to how this is going to turn out. Now, I'm very suspicious of him because he had uh, he invited President um, Bashir of Sudan and essentially gave him a state visit to Egypt a couple of months ago when he should have been, at least in my view, uh, he's under indictment of the International Criminal Court. He should have been arrested. So, I mean, anyone who's sort of lending a hand to President Bashir and not arresting him um, made me suspicious of him in light of the fact that Iran is up to their eyeballs with Sudan. Well, unfortunately, uh, that's not an uncommon story across the African continent. And we have reached out numerous times to uh, countries that have given uh, Bashir uh, a welcome, uh, allowed him to come to meetings, because he is under indictment. And he does uh, need to be held accountable for uh, what uh, happened on his watch as president. 
On the other hand, though, this is a long border with Egypt. One of the biggest problems that Egypt is facing is the lack of border security. Uh, the importation of weapons on their way to Gaza, for example, uh, coming out of Sudan. So we, we have a lot of very uh, intense discussions uh, with our Egyptian counterparts, including him, as to, you know, let's prioritize. We need to stop extremism uh, in Egypt. We need to stop weapons coming across your border. We need to reassert order in the Sinai. It's in Egypt's interest. It's in Israel's interest. We need to try to stop uh, Hamas from its uh, constant attacks on Israel, something that also redounds to the detriment of Egypt uh, over the long run because it could become uncontrollable. We have a long list of important issues that we're raising uh, with them, and obviously uh, their borders with Libya and Sudan are critical. Your predecessor, uh, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, said the other night that um, uh, Iran, if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, that it is a turning point in history. And everybody lives in fear of it, whether it's President Obama has said things, you've said things, your predecessors, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, no one wants Iran to have nuclear weapon. Um, but as we all sort of say that, they're marching forward in time. Um, what's going to happen there? Well, as you know, our policy is prevention, not containment. And we have, through the hard work uh, we've undertaken with the international community, uh, imposed the toughest set of sanctions, uh, international and bilateral, uh, on any country. We know it's having an effect. We have uh, a great deal of evidence about the economic impact that the sanctions are having on the Iranian economy and therefore on the political and clerical leadership. Now, Part of what we have to continue to do is keep them isolated, keep all the countries, including Russia and China, on board as they have been up to now. So we've said from the very beginning, uh, we're open to diplomacy. We are doing so in the uh, so-called P5 plus one uh, format. But this is an unacceptable uh, path that they must uh, stop or uh, action uh, will have to be taken at this point. Uh, we are continuing to keep the pressure on them uh, in the pressure track and making it clear that uh, you know, there's not going to be any alternative uh, but to deny them a nuclear weapons program. I'm not suggesting we have military action against them. I'm always sort of looking at it from afar, and I see um, a country that, first of all, yes, we do have sanctions on it, but we do give waivers to some countries. I mean, some countries get to do business with them a little bit, so it's not a, a completely hermetically sealed country. Um, they do get some relief. Um, but the other thing is that they're behind, um, they're behind problems in Syria. They're behind problems with Hezbollah, with Hamas. I mean, Iran, and they're, they're destabilizing to Israel, saying hateful things to Israel. We're busy trying to contain them, but we may be on a different time track than their nuclear weapons program. I mean, you know, they may, it may be a faster program. I don't know that it is. So, you know, there is going to come a time when, you know, we're going to have to, we might have to make a different decision. Well, we've always said all options are on the table. The president's been very clear about that. And I'm glad you raised the, uh, the terrorism uh, aspect of Iran's behavior because there's so much attention on the effort to prevent them from getting a nuclear weapon that we sometimes overlook the very active efforts by the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard, uh, the Quds Force, their proxies like Leban uh, the Lebanese Hezbollah and others, who have engaged in assassinations, bombings, destabilizing countries. That has been a very uh, uh, challenging, ongoing threat. And for a while, I have to tell you, when I came into office, there were too many countries that were turning a blind eye to it. We have worked very hard to get uh, the international community, particularly the region, Europe, and elsewhere, to say, wait a minute, these guys need to be stopped on the terrorism front. They cannot be permitted to go forward. You know, when we found out about the plot to kill the uh, ambassador from here Saudi in Arabia here in Washington, you know, there was disbelief on the part of a lot of countries, and we produced evidence. This man pled guilty. No one should have any doubt that in addition to the nuclear threat, which I agree 
with Dr. Kissinger is a potential turning point in history, not only because of what it would mean to Iran's attempt to intimidate their neighbors, but the arms race that it would instigate. But we have to also keep an eye on stopping them from their terrorism. How do they get the money to do that? If we have sanctions on them, and if they're behind supplying weapons, there was the Yemen, mm -hmm. Yemen uh, mm -hmm. boat that was picked up the mm -hmm. other day, and behind Hezbollah and Hamas, where are they getting the money? Is it from Russia or to, to help sup to fund these terrorists? Well, they are a rich country. They have uh, a lot of uh, economic wealth and strength that has been built up over many years. Uh, these sanctions are truly biting, but there are outlier countries that still uh, try to evade uh, the efforts that we all have made to make it as difficult as possible to do business with them. And, and we've shut down a lot of financial institutions. We have changed. Uh, the behaviors of a lot of governments and others who thought they could get away with it. You know, but there are still, you know, rogue nations. There are still countries that are totally dependent upon Iranian uh, resources. So I think we've done uh, a very uh, credible job of toughening and tightening the sanctions, but there's more to come. We'll be issuing more sanctions, identifying more people. Uh, but ultimately, what we want to see is Iran come to the negotiating table in the P5 plus one uh, format uh, and basically say they're you know, going to have the most open uh, inspections, they're not pursuing nuclear weapons. They claim that they're not. You know, they keep referring to uh, the religious fatwa that uh, the supreme leader uh, issued, that they're not pursuing you don't nuclear believe weapons. That. Well, you know, I'm from the trust but verify uh, camp when it comes to Iran. You know, this is what they say, they continue to say it, but we have a body of evidence that points in the other. Two-part question, Benghazi. Number one is, in light of what's happened, can Americans now feel safe or satisfied that we're moving to, to secure all our consulates and embassies for our diplomats overseas? That's the first thing. The second thing is, should we go back to Benghazi? Well, as to the first question, you know, the Accountability Review Board uh, made a set of recommendations. We are embracing and implementing all of them uh, and making sure that we apply them. Now, it's not all a question of money. I'm the first to say that. You know, you have to have the right people and the right jobs making the right decisions, but money is a factor. And ever since the Bush administration, uh, our requests for security money from Congress have not been met. So you've had to make priority decisions, and it's been difficult. So I am determined to leave the State Department safer and stronger when I walk out the door, and I know that John Kerry will just pick up the ball and run with it. With respect to do we go back, you know, let me explain why we were there. This was the heart of the Libyan revolution. We knew that there were dangerous people uh, in and around Benghazi. We also knew that there were a lot of loose weapons, and part of what we were doing there was trying to get leads on recovering those loose weapons. And we knew that there were smuggling routes that could go into Egypt, into Sinai, threaten Israel. So there were very important reasons why we were there, not just uh, the State Department, but other government agencies. Uh, whether or when we go back will depend upon the security situation and what kind of uh, you know, security support diplomats would have. But I hasten to add, Greta, that you know, I, I have dangerous posts all over the world. We have people in incredibly uh, high threat environments. I've seen some of them. You have seen some of them. And they're there because we believe their being there is in America's national interests, particularly our security interests. What about the women of Afghanistan? What can they expect as uh, we leave? Well, they're going to uh, have to be given uh, support from their own government and people as well as the international community. Uh, it's grim for them. For a lot of women, life is much better. Uh, girls are in school who never were before. Women are able to practice their professions and pursue their businesses. So for a, a uh, increasing group of Afghan women, Life is better. Still, uh, there are all kinds of discrimination and difficulties. But for a large group of rural women, uh, life has not changed very much. And what I worry about is that the security situation will keep a total lid on the aspirations and education of the rural women and begin to uh, intimidate and drive out of the public space uh, women who have seen their lives improve. 
And I think it's incumbent upon us and all the nations that have been in Afghanistan to do everything we can to uh, prevent that from happening.